everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm the host, Sean Boyce. I'd like to welcome my guest to the show today, Linda Joy Jackson, who is the Director of Business at HopeWorks. Hello, Linda Joy. How are you? And welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Sean. Thank you for that nice and warm welcome. Um, I am very happy to be here. Excellent. We can't wait to learn more from you. I'm very excited to share your story with our listeners as well, too, which would be the perfect place to start. So if you don't mind, can you talk to us a little bit more about your background and how you got to where you are today? Uh, sure. Um, I'd love to tell my, my uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my professional journey um, and then also how I ended up at HopeWorks, which is a story I love to tell. So <laughs> so for my professional journey, I started out uh, with the city of Philadelphia in project management. Um, I worked out at the airport for a number of years um, and did uh, some project management there, uh, did some work um, in strategy and stood up there office of strategy, uh, office of strategy management. Um, then I actually... Um, I just made a decision in life um, that I said, I want to be more involved in my community and I'm not really sure how to do that. Um, and, and so one of the things that I did was I started to volunteer um, and I ended up volunteering at HopeWorks as a mentor. Um, so I had, uh, I think maybe two different mentees um, over time. And then a position opened up at HopeWorks because um I don't know. I started all, honestly, it all started with a tour. And when I walked in the door, I saw um, folks that looked like me, brown and black folks, um, uh, really being respected um, and um, a real impact in their lives. And I wanted to be a part of that. Um, so after that, I was like, you know what, this is a place I'd work. This is a place I would consider working. Um, and so it's history from there. Very cool. That's a powerful story for sure. I certainly mm -hmm. can imagine. Thank you for sharing that. And I know our listeners are probably curious as well, too, but can you tell us a little bit more as well in terms of what HopeWorks is and share with us oh. the mission that HopeWorks? Absolutely. So we were an anti-poverty organization and you're like, excellent. What does that mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, So, so what, that, what that means? Uh, is we basically, if you're between the ages of 16, well, 17 and 26, uh, those are on, our only parameters for joining the program. Um, folks coming in, 99% are unemployed uh, and making $400 or less a year. Uh, the goal is to get them into a stable, um, a living wage or above job, right? Um, so for us, um, our, you know, on average, people are making $43,000 a year when they come out. So that's a game wow. changer. And that's what anti-poverty means is you're getting people to a point of stability. And of course, I'm sure we'll talk more, um, but there are all kinds of other supports around that um, that really help um, people to, to kind of gain that footing um, so that you can start life in, in a different place. That's absolutely amazing and such an incredible transformation. I love that you shared kind of where the clients come into the program, where they're at, and then mm -hmm. after the program, the kind of transformation they're able to make. And I have to mm -hmm. imagine that is an incredible game changer, like you just mentioned, in mm -hmm. terms of the impact it has on them, their life, mm -hmm. their community, families, just like reverberating effects everywhere, right, which is mm -hmm. so cool. And I would also love to hear you talk a little bit more about, because, you know, tech nerd at heart over here myself and ah, a lot of what we talk okay. about on the show is related to figuring out different ways of incorporating technology and software and how it helps people and scales impact and stuff like that. But yes. I know that tech and software and things like that are core to your program, in fact. So can you talk to us a little bit more about essentially what that means and, and what those elements are for HopeWorks? Oh, yeah. Uh, so some people ask why tech? You know, great question. Um, and as we know, tech is one of those places uh, that doesn't have a tremendous amount of brown and black people in it. Um, however, has a great uh, potential uh, where you can enter right from high school. You don't necessarily need a post-secondary degree or anything like that um, to, to get into the field. So um, that's a great place that entry level uh, tech space, we know that people can make a good salary um, and then with uh, some skills, 
some some um, soft skills as well as some actual tech skills um, that can really that can open up a door for them where not only could they get in in a really great place, there's also a tremendous amount of growth um, that they can have in their careers as well. Super well said. Couldn't have said it better myself. And I'm very happy to hear that uh, the organization is able to take advantage of that Mm -hmm. and enable these transformations for people that really need it. That's fantastic. And uh, admitting fully myself, tech desperately needs as much diversity as it possibly can get because it is Mm -hmm. unimpressive to say the least today. Uh, So any opportunity we can, where we can invest to make an impact in that is incredible. And we thank you for all the work that you're doing in order to help you know, improve those situations. Um, oh, I'd love to take the credit, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what you're doing work. is playing a big role, but well said. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Um, let's see. So where I'd kind of love to go next from there, if it's okay with you, yeah. is to talk a little bit more about, because we talk about impact on this show, right? I'd love to okay. know in terms of like how you would define impact, so to speak. And I know different uh, people have different ways that they define it, especially in terms of how it relates to their organization's mission. So I'd love mm-hmm. to know that. And then I'd love to talk about how you consider the organization. What are the mechanisms in which the organization drives impact today? Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, we are very clear about impact here at HopeWorks <laughs> and what love that it. means. Um, how they're tied to our organization is they're tied to our key performance indicators um, for each person. So um, no matter where you reside in the organization, they are always mission focused and forward facing. We we are all about the promise that we make when you come in the door to get you that job at the end, right? That That is our promise. That is the goal. Um, so for um, for us, um, it's about how many people we employ um, and we set really clear goals. Uh, so last year was 96 folks that we employed. Uh, we are shooting for 125 uh, this year as we expand. So both in um, Philadelphia, we're expanding. We'll have an office in Kingston and we're also expanding in um, New Jersey and Camden as well. Awesome. Another, Love to hear that. Another way. If it's, it's okay too, because I, yes, I the yes, the numbers, how many, but also um, what's very important to us is we're we're just there. Are things that um, we're going to be really clear about what is um, a great wage and environment for our young people. So another way that we measure impact and success is the actual dollar amount that they're making when they leave here. Um, so our goal is no less than thirty five thousand a year, and as you see, um, we are exceeding that. Um, so by right now, by about eight thousand, which is great uh, because we know inflation has been a big deal in people's lives, um, and we're shooting for you know that amount, and hopefully with some benefits too. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, awesome. and I think what I'll say. Uh, so those are the two ways. I think there was a third way. Um, it'll come to me, you know, absolutely. But there are a couple of really big on our numbers and making sure we're hitting our numbers. And that's what I was going to commend you on first and foremost, related to kind of that answer to impact. I know a number of organizations, it's a challenge to figure out how to get out of that, like measuring output situation, because a lot of mm-hmm. funding sources can be tied to that. But I think you've done mm-hmm. an excellent job articulating very mm-hmm. clearly and very directly what impact means in terms of those numbers, right? Yeah. And what we're measuring, right? The objective is to get get them the job, right? Yeah. And then even more so to that, how much that job pays, right? Which mm-hmm. both of those are obviously directly impacting the client experience, which is as hardcore as impact gets, really. And that's always what I love to talk about on the show as much as possible is like, if you're measuring something that isn't from the perspective of your client and the people that are in your program, is that really impact? You know what I mean? Or is there something we can measure that is going to be more directly impactful for them? Those two that you gave are outstanding examples uh, of exactly what one, impacts the client. I have one more, Sean, because that's the one I that slipped my mind. And, and that is the retention rate, which is really important. Uh, oh, so yeah. we, to understand that it's not okay just to get the job and to get the job paying what you needed to pay, but to keep the job, <laughs> you know? Well said. Uh, Right. And so 90 percent of the people coming through our program are keeping their job 12 months or more. 
uh, that could mean uh, it wasn't a good fit, or it could mean that they actually moved to a better job. Uh, they got promoted out into another company or something like that, but 90% are keeping that job um, for 12, those 12 months or more. Um, and and we also have resources in case it's not a good fit or something happened in life where you can always mm-hmm. come back. We have um, our Cohen Technology Center and you have resources there where you can start to identify employers that you can reach out to um, so that you can find employment again if for some reason it does lapse. Excellent and well said. Mm-hmm. Certainly an important element of that story too, right? Not just finding and getting there, being prepared for getting Mm -hmm. the job, making sure that it pays well enough, but it's also being able to keep it as well, too. And it Mm -hmm. sounds like the organization has done an incredible job with that as well, too, because those are some impressive numbers. So congratulations there as well. Um, uh, In terms of where I'd kind of like to go from there is, Mm -hmm. and you shared a little bit of these details already, but I'd love to hear you talk even a little bit more about them as well, too. Number one, I'm happy you're going to be coming over to Philly side because this is where I am. You're happy, (laughs) too. So that's awesome. But can you talk a little bit more in terms of your goals for kind of scaling impact from here and what those plans look like? Oh, okay. Scaling impact means a couple different things for us. Um, As you know, um, when you grow, you really got to focus on what are your processes, what are your systems, um, and making sure they're clear, um, that you can duplicate them. And you're also understanding the finesse of, um, what needs to be different, right? Um, what what needs to across the board be the same in your organization, and and what for a particular uh, business or a particular group might need a little more flexibility or something different. Like what what are the key things though that have to be the same? So I think that's one thing uh, for impact. I think a huge uh, piece is being able to serve more people when we talk about scaling. So that that means our physical, um, our our facilities have to be different. Uh, we have to have more space. Um, so we have more space. We're going to have more space at 808, 808 Market Street on Camden. We're also going to have more space by opening up a location in Kingsington. And then, you know, proximity matters. Um, so can I jump on the L or the blue line and get right there? Um, Or do I need to, you know, hop across the bridge? Um, So for some people that commute used to be an hour and a half, and now it's 30 minutes, you know? And so we know that if you can get through the program, you can probably keep that job. So we want to make sure that you get through and that um, we are accessible to as many people as possible. So that's also what scaling means to us. It also means accessibility. It also means um, being in the space to help as many people as possible. Excellent. And thank you for the response to the scaling impact question. I know there's a couple dimensions to that, and you did a good job, I think, of addressing those because scaling impact doesn't just mean growth for growth's sake, right? It's about the performance of the presence that you have. And then the other component, which you described as well, is what is the size of that presence? And, and is that expected to grow as well, too? So the performance of the program, but also you know where you are and how many people you're able to reach, to use your words, which I think do a great job of describing that. So my next question from there, naturally, was going to be, I know technology and software are core aspects of your program and the transformation that you help your clients with making, but do you, do you as an organization plan to leverage either one of those tools or resources being tech or software to help with the scaling of the impact component for the organization as well? I think what I'll say in terms of there's our internal technology um, that we're always growing, um, looking for uh, the best way. Uh, What is the best way to build our web pages um, in a way that's easy for um, folks just coming in to grasp um, and then to deliver on. So always we're looking for how do we, what what software we're using? How do we improve that? How are we communicating with each other? Are there better ways? Uh, and then we also, in terms of reaching more people, most of the things that we have are through referrals, um, but we have um, specifically worked on our social media presence um, to grow our social media presence um, on all of our platforms. I think we've probably had the most success 
at link in LinkedIn. Um, and we're just, we were nominated this year for best LinkedIn presence by um, the nonprofit social media day. So that was a huge thing for us. Uh, and, and just let, yeah, thank you. Um, and um, shout out to Sakina Brody, um, who is handling our social media and our marketing um, did a fantastic, absolutely phenomenal way of um, not telling my story, um, but telling the story of Hope Works, um, what we're here to do, and how individual um, lives change, which lead to communities changing. Well said. Yeah, the, the components that you mentioned are all important, right? Figuring out how to get the message out there, but leveraging modern tools and resources to reach mm -hmm. audiences where they are, right? Social media has changed the game there in a big way as well also. So anything that can be done there to reach folks, which I know, you know, your program enrolls uh, folks that are on the younger side as well also. Um, mm -hmm. So those platforms are really popular there. And if they can, I mean, the transformation that your organization is capable of helping them with is traumatic, right? So reaching them however you can, that more than likely is certainly going to help with growth as well also reach a wider population whenever possible. So thank you for sharing those elements as well too. And I know how important the marketing aspect is. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yes. Um, so there were a couple other things I know you and I've talked about previously, which I'd love to talk to you a little about on, or have you speak about in this episode as well also. And um, one of those topics was related to kind of being, you to use your words that you've described before, being trauma informed. Mm -hmm. I wondered if you could, help educate us a little bit more on that topic in terms of what it means and its level of importance when it comes to, you know, your program and how it works and making sure that you're able to be sensitive to those elements because they're really important in order for the entire program and for the clients that go through it to be successful. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's a great, uh, great question. Uh, and I think, but I'll start off, uh, I'll start off to say this about trauma. Um, and that is that we, have all been through a collective trauma, you know, and and all walking through the pandemic together, um, no matter how we seem to do that um, as individuals. Um, so the first thing that we do is we recognize that trauma um, and we recognize that we all are living through our own traumatic experiences. Um, we are bringing those in um, and those things color how we behave, how we react, and then striving to understand not so much uh, what's what's wrong with you, but kind of what's happening with you. Um, and, and then how do we work through that? Um, so, you know, in the practical sense, there are a couple of ways that we do that. Um, we understand that uh, trauma can kind of dull your senses and make you feel numb. Um, one of the first questions that we ask, we always start with a collective business meeting and a collective closing meeting um, at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day. Uh, and we always ask, how are you feeling? Uh, because uh, we have to recognize that trauma, but also to unpack it a little bit to say trauma has numbed us. So how do I access that in my mind to say, well, how am I actually feeling? And how do I want to feel? Uh, so it's how how are you feeling? How do you want to feel at the end of the day? So to recognize that and then to also say who can help you, who can encourage you today to understand that you are not by yourself and we will walk through this together. Now, everyone won't do necessarily something to that effect, but that can inform the way that we communicate with one another and strive to look um, at through the lens of somebody else's glasses. Uh, rather than just our own. <laughs> well and you're like, whoa, this is like I'm underwater when I put these on, you know, yep. so didn't realize that was happening to you, you know. So um, yep. understanding their way and also um, getting people to a place where you can um, keep that job also means when things come up in the workplace, that those are things that we as managers, supervisors, directors have to practically mm -hmm. deal with to say, uh, this is what happened. This is why that's not okay. Um, but we also have our career coaches to come alongside and say, um, you have been late all week, <laughs> you know, let's yep. figure out how do we deal with that. And let's also figure out what's going on because we, we sometimes find, um, oh, I'm homeless and I'm I'm coming from such and such place, which is where I normally stay because it feels safe to me. Um, and so it's, it's that's that's what's going on right now. So recognizing what people are going through, walking through that with them 
and still holding each other accountable um, for the results um, that that they need to produce while they're in their internships and that we need to make sure happen as we keep our promise to make sure that they get their jobs. Such a great point. And it's such an important element of making sure that this process goes well, but it's something that can be very hard to see, right? So if you're not Mm -hmm. proactively and actually looking for it, to, like you said, understand what it looks, what the world looks like through their eyes or in the, how to walk in their shoes or something like that. Mm-hmm. And you don't really have an appreciation for how difficult it, what it is they may be going through is. So it can dramatically affect their experience for any program, not just whatever it is you're trying to help them with. So that element of being trauma informed, I think is that much more important. And I have to imagine that in, involving that as part of your process has a direct effect on the result for the said individuals as well too, right? To be able to understand how to work with anybody because of what specifically they may be going through that someone else may not. Yeah. And then we teach, we teach other organizations that as well. Um, That's part of one of the businesses that we do because sometimes that's important. Uh, We still sometimes, I think particularly as Americans, so focused on what we believe the result to be, um, that we forget to say things like, are you okay? Yeah. You know, you didn't quite well see yourself. Um, is everything all right? Um, so that people can have a moment, breathe, and then get through the remainder of that day. Excellent point. So mm-hmm. true. It's so easy to keep moving, you know, a million miles an hour. It's it, Sometimes we can forget how important it is just to take a step back and like take a breath and just hear somebody out right? In terms of like, how's everything going? Everybody's so focused on pushing or moving forward that if you, but if you don't take that time um, and take those necessary precautions, then that could set up, you know, some form of failure or setback at a later date, which you could have prevented if you had invested in that earlier and been proactive about it. It has taught me a lot. I think also just um, managing other people to have those conversations. So I think it's um it is something that um I think you, you always carry with you after you're exposed to it. Um because like you said, um you you're then allowed to look at productivity in a different way. But also like you said, head off when something really bad is coming. And if you had had a brief conversation and someone just said I need two days off to deal with this, yep. you could have avoided turnover or whatever that, that might totally. be. Um, and what we have found um, is that it has made us more successful, not less successful. Our, our numbers are getting better and better um, as as we turn into a trauma informed organization. Um, impact, um, success, KPIs went up. It's amazing, mm-hmm. uh, and congratulations because that's so important in in terms of delivering, like we said before, right, real impact from the perspective of the clients. So that's amazing. Uh, Linda Joy, thank you so much for sharing all this wonderful information that you and your organization are doing. Uh, It's powerful, it's inspiring, and, you know, we're excited for growth and how that scales from here. The couple questions I have for you before we let you go, the first is, are there any resources in particular that you might share with other nonprofit leaders like yourself where they can go to learn more about Anything that you've shared here, your organization, any of your work, or anything that you feel that has been important along the way to kind of help you through this journey yourself? Um, yeah, that's fantastic. I think the best thing to do is, um, you know, I would connect with us on LinkedIn. I say, go get your daily dose of good news. Um, so whether somebody's getting their diploma, whether there's someone's getting a new job, um, whatever that might be, um, good things are happening. And in a world where not so good things are happening, um, that's a great place um, uh, just to be. Um, And it's also a great way if you want to start engaging with us, Uh, because some people start there and they might move into mentoring or uh, just coming out to see us. Visiting is an absolutely fantastic way to get to know us. you know, engaging with our trauma team is a great way to learn how to be trauma informed. Um, And definitely we like to be a resource to other nonprofits, uh, which we've done recently. Um, So we just launched uh, for Comcast Rise. um, We just launched a project where 
We mapped all of the folks that uh, they gave money to across the United States. Uh, so, you know, there are all kinds of ways um, we can share our resources, uh, be helpful to other nonprofits and other organizations um, from their websites to mapping to training. That is super cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I have to recommend to all of our listeners to go to check out everything that HopeWorks does because the projects that you're working on and the organizations you work with, uh, there's so many interesting and cool stories to tell there as well too, but I'll let them do a little bit more of that homework. Maybe you and I'll record some more episodes about that. So I think that would be really cool to dive into yeah. as well, but I certainly wanted to start here. Thank you for sharing the resources element. And then the last question I have for you is who should reach out to you? How can they get in touch? And you know, what can we be doing to help you with your mission? Those are all great questions. Um, who should reach out? Um, anyone who wants to make a difference. Because um, there's so many ways you can do that. There's so many ways you can engage with us. Um, so anyone who wants to make a difference, whether you're a corporation, a nonprofit, an individual, um, we are open to that interaction and how we can co-labor together um, to work on anti-poverty and really make this um, a, level, a level playing field for all of us. Well said. Any uh, particular uh, way folks can reach out or get in contact? What uh, what mechanisms, if any, would you recommend best? Reach out to me on LinkedIn, Linda Joy Jackson, um, Director of Business at HopeWorks. That's probably your easiest way. Um, you can also just simply email me, um, and that's at, you know, lindajoy at hopeworks.org. Um, all one word, <laughs> you know, uh, that's the easiest way. And then I can respond um, and you can, then we can go from there. Perfect. And thank you, Linda Joy, so much. And I'm looking forward to taking my tour. Oh, I can't wait, Sean. You're going to absolutely <laughs> fall in love. I fell in Me love too. the first time I came here. So, I mean, I'm a awesome. little biased, but. <laughs> Very cool. I love it. And anybody in the greater Philadelphia area, highly encourage you to reach out to Linda Joy and schedule your tour as well. See what you can do by getting involved with HopeWorks and their awesome mission. Yep. And we're in uh, Kingsington this December. So. Super excited. Can't mm -hmm. wait. Thank <laughs> you so much, Linda Joy. We appreciate you being here. Oh, thank you so much, Sean. Thank you for having me.